I'm Christine from Auckland Saddle Fit. I hope everyone is staying safe and sane in the quarantine at the moment. Today we're going to do part one of a three-part series talking about the saddle and rider fit. So as people are aware, when we're looking at the fit of a saddle, we look at it on the horse. Today we're going to focus on what it's like with the saddle. So one of the things that I tend to see quite a lot of, particularly over social media, are people looking for saddles and they'll often ask for advice and we'll get a lot of different answers. One of the things that is important to be aware of is that when Susan down the road or Rachel, your neighbour, is giving you some kind of advice, their opinion isn't wrong, but it is based on what works for them with their body shape and their horse's shape. So even something as simple as the shape of a horse's ribcage is going to be different in how that saddle makes you feel. So obvious differences between people are males and females. Just going to give you a little bit of a heads up, there's lots of information online where you can see that when we look at the difference between a woman's pelvis and a man's pelvis, there is quite a big difference in that pubic arch area. Now it's obvious why, but how this relates to saddle fit is that as a woman, you've probably heard it before, when we're balancing in our saddle, we're using our seat bones and we drop our pelvis forward onto that pubic arch to find our point of balance. For men, when they are riding, and again for obvious reasons, they use their seat bones and they drop back onto their tailbone. What this means is when we're looking at how a saddle is going to work for you, that shape through the pelvis needs more support in the saddle for a woman than it does for a man. And it makes no difference if you are a small petite woman. Our hip shape through the pubic arch is like that, where as a man's is more like that, as you can see from that picture. So we're going to start and talk about the saddle. So when we're talking about saddle fit in relation to the rider, a couple of terms that you're going to need to know. We're going to start with the seat. So the seat itself is what we refer to as the widest part across the saddle. This is the area that your seat bones are going to sit into. Then we move forward, we go into our twist and our waist. So people often get a bit confused with the waist. It's the seam line that you can see. And riders will look at a saddle and say, well, this saddle obviously has a really narrow twist just because of this seam line. Now, this is literally how the skirt attaches onto the rest of the seating leather, and I wouldn't use that stitch line as a guideline. Our twist has got a couple of other factors that are going to influence the way it feels. But it's this area through the saddle that is the first point of contact on our thighs, and what also helps support us when we drop forward onto that pubic arch. Other parts of the saddle are of course the cantle, so the angle is going to influence the amount of space that we have and the amount of support. We've got our stirrup bar positions which differ between the GP, the jump saddles, the dressage saddles. We've got flat shapes and lengths. We've got the type of girthing, so whether you've got short girthing, long girthing. Also whether or not we're talking about having a standard dual flat saddle or we might be looking at the one piece mono flat and our blocks, whether we've got fixed blocks or we've got movable blocks. And finally, we're looking at the type of panel, the shape of the panel, and anything that you put underneath the panel. So the bigger picture of how a saddle is going to fit and the features that work for you is quite long and complicated. So what do you need to know? Well, the take home message here is that you need to be comfortable. One of the things that we do a lot as riders is they spend a lot of money on the horse. Everything from new covers to feed, lots of body work. What we don't tend to do is focus on ourselves. So when we hear riders talking about having back pain, there's obviously a few factors about the saddle that can be contributing to that. The same with pain through the hips, or you could be looking at problems with balance um, and having knee and ankle joints, perhaps what you're more looking at is the width of stirrup threads. But in relation to saddle fit and hearing, I have pain, what we need you to do as a rider or somebody who is uncomfortable is make sure you're spending money on yourself. Have your physio, osteo, massage, whatever body work you have, yoga, do the things that you need to do to keep yourself soft and comfortable. So, just for this session, because there is so much information, we're going to start the fitting the rider to the saddle process. Now, one of the things that we're often asked is, what size seat should I be riding in? 
there are a lot of things that are going to affect the fit of the rider into the saddle. So starting for size, the easiest thing to do to give us our first indication of what size we should be riding in is measuring the length of our femur. Now, most women are longer in their femur than men. So what we're doing, finding the point of your hip, there are a couple of ways to do this, but this is the easiest. Run your tape measure down to the middle of your knee and have a look in inches to see how long that is. I'm just over five foot nine, and for me, when I measure that, it's about 18 and a quarter inches. So I can ride in some saddles between a 17 and a half to 18, depending on the other features with them. So saddle fit and what does that mean once we've got our starting point? Our length of leg is important to know because when we're looking for a basis of where to start from, we want to be able to tell how our position for our hip to our knee is going to be fitting into a saddle. Now, in the case of relevance, this is all different depending on the balance. If your saddle is not in balance, you're not gonna get a true feel or a true fit in the saddle. If you're riding your horse or you're looking at having another saddle, you're trying to find comfort, what is working for you, we're gonna have a look at this length first. So, what we're doing in regards to looking at our length in relation to our bum size is having a look at the rest of the seat size. A good indication that you've got enough room in the saddle is to have a hand in the front and a hand behind. Now this saddle is of course more of a jump saddle, so I've got more room created by having an open cantle. So that allows me more space in the saddle. If we're being technical, what you can see in this particular saddle is that for the length of my leg, I actually don't have a huge amount of leg room. Now we'll cover this in a couple of other features. Once we know that we've got a nice size, we can start to look at the next factors. How to tell if your saddle is too small? Well, if you don't have very much room in front and the back of your saddle, what you can find is that things get a little bit snug. With your seat bones, they're always going to land in the part of the saddle that your leg dictates. So in the nature of a rising trot, this is the length we have. If my saddle is too small, when I come to sit, I can't sit back into this wider seat area when I rise and sit, I'm going to get pushed to the back of the saddle. So not only is this going to be wildly uncomfortable for the horse, but as a rider, all of a sudden my pressure is at the top of the cantle. I'll have a tendency to be propelled forward. When I'm sitting as well, remember that my instructors or peers that I ride with are going to be commenting that my shoulders are in more of a forward position and they will be encouraging me to sit with my shoulders back. Now I don't know if you can see it well, but I can certainly feel it. Because my saddle is small and I'm not fitting in the correct part of the seat and now up on the cantle, what I am feeling is a lot of tension through my lower back as I bring my shoulders back and attempt to hold my hip shoulder heel line, I have a lot of extra curve there and I can't imagine how uncomfortable this would be on an actual horse trying to absorb the emotion as well. So saddles that are too small are not only bad for the horse, but they are really bad for the rider's back as well. Again, you might be finding a very similar problem. The way that the seat is shaped for rider comfort is to have a bit of a scoop as it heads forward towards the pommel. If you don't have very much room in front of you, various factors can contribute to this. You're going to find yourself rising more on the pommel, which is quite uncomfortable and can lead to all sorts of issues including having bladder related issues in women or urinary tract infections. So this is a good starting point. Next time you're on your horse, have a look and think to yourself, do I have enough room in my saddle from my knee to my hip? Can I feel enough room front and back? Just bear in mind that obviously there are times where you have to make a bit of a compromise for the back length of the horse versus the rider's height. But in general, how is the saddle fitting me terms? This is the first part to start. Join me in the next part as we talk about the rest of the saddle features. Thank you.